Welcome to my first video of my new Introduction to MATLAB series. In this series, I will be using the official MATLAB on-ramp course, where I will basically teach and guide anyone who is new to MATLAB and would like to learn the fundamental basics of MATLAB. And so just as a brief introduction to what MATLAB is and what it is used for, first of all, MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory. And uh, MATLAB is basically a programming language and a platform for numeric computing, which is commonly used for engineering and scientific purposes, such as data collection, data analysis, control systems, signal and image processing, and robotics, just to name a few. And also note that MATLAB is commonly known to be similar to Python, so if you're at all familiar to Python, you might notice some overlapping similarities and that might help you learn MATLAB quicker. But if you're not familiar with any other programming languages, that's totally okay. This is going to be a beginner friendly course. I myself was not really familiar with other programming languages back when I was first introduced to MATLAB, but I was still able to efficiently learn MATLAB as this was required for my university program. So really, regardless of your background, I encourage you to stick around if you really want to learn MATLAB. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this first task here on the on-ramp screen. Now, we will complete this task by typing on this main window that says task one in blue. And so this window is known as the command window. And that is basically where you will be directly telling the program what to do, as well as the location where the results will be outputted. So basically, this is where we have both inputs and outputs. And now do note that MATLAB is, of course, able to perform calculations, anything from basic calculations such as multiplication and division to ordinary differential equations. And so in this first task, we will tell MATLAB to multiply 3 times 5, and we will type this as 3 asterisk 5, since asterisk is the multiplication command in MATLAB. So typing 3 asterisk 5, then hitting enter, we will of course get 15. So as you can see, MATLAB has outputted the answer 15 onto the command window below our input. So this completes task one. And now since MATLAB is of course a numerical programming language, we tend to deal with variables, which of course are letters that represent a quantity or number. And so in this second task, we are tasked with assigning the result of three times five to the variable M. And so to do this, we just simply type m equals 3 times 5. So this is basically an equation that defines the value of m. So we hit enter on that. And of course, in return, we get m equals 15. So hopefully here you can see the intuition behind assigning variables. Moving on to task 3. The description tells us that the equals sign is known as the assignment operator, which of course means that the value of the expression on the right of the equal sign is of course equivalent to the variable on the left. And now we're given an instance where we enter x equals 3 plus 4. And so when we do this, MATLAB will first evaluate the operation 3 plus 4 and then assign the results of that operation to variable x, which is basically what happened for variable m. The operation 3 times 5 was first calculated, and then that value was assigned to m. Now, notice for this task, we will type m equals m plus 1. And now, just before hitting enter here, what do you think the result will be? If you said 16, then you are of course correct. And this is because 
even though we assigned a new value to m, the m on the right side of the equation, m plus 1, still retained its original value of 15. And so our new m is equal to that 15 plus 1, which is of course 16, which is now the new value of m. So now if you look over to the right, you notice that we have the section called workspace. And this is basically a table that shows all the outputs of the variables that have been created. And now in task four, we are asked to create a variable named y that has the value of m divided by two. So over in the command window, I'll go ahead and type y equals m divided by two using forward slash as the division function. And so after hitting enter, of course, we will get a result of y equals eight since the last value of m was 16. And so 16 divided by two is indeed eight. Now, another fundamental thing to know about MATLAB programming is that whenever you enter a command without a semicolon at the end of the line, MATLAB will not only calculate the result, but it will also display the result. So for instance, here, if x equals five plus one, then since there is no semicolon at the end of this line, MATLAB will output x equals six. And that is of course for the user to see. So now let's just do a quick worked example using a semicolon this time to help see this difference more clearly. So in this task, we will type the line k equals eight minus two with a semicolon at the end after the two, just like so. And now I'll go ahead and hit enter. And we will see that the result of this command is not outputted onto our command window. Whereas before, we would see the values of these variables, such as y equals eight, m equals 16, and so forth. But however, if you notice on the workspace window over to the right, you can see that we do have the value of k outputted as six. And again, this is because the workspace window stores every single variable output. So if you're ever using a bunch of lines of code and you would like to look at previous results, that would be your best place of reference. And one last thing to point out is that we normally tend to use semicolons when we're running extensive MATLAB programs dealing with a bunch of calculations in order to reduce the workload on the computer and prevent any slowdowns as well as reducing unnecessary clutter in our command window. So it's often good practice to get used to adding those semicolons at the end of your lines of code. Unless, of course, you want to specifically look at the result of a certain command. Now moving on to task six. In this task, we learned that we can use a keystroke that can help us quickly recall previous commands by simply pressing the up arrow key on our keyboard. So here with our command window open, we will press the up arrow key to return to the command m equals three times five. So I'll go ahead and press the up arrow one, two, three, four times until we have reached m equals three times five. And then before hitting enter, we're asked to change the command to be m equals three times k. So since k is six, m will be outputted as 18. So hopefully you can see how useful this keystroke is to quickly recalling and editing previous commands. And now moving on to the final task in this lesson. Here we will learn that whenever we simply enter just a variable name at the command prompt, MATLAB will simply display the current value of that variable. So for instance, let's say we want to know the value of y. We can just simply input y in the command prompt and press enter. We will of course get that y equals eight. So this is a good way of quickly verifying previous variables that you have in your command window. 
And now just as a bonus step here for further practice, if you notice, the value of y did not change, even though m did. And so it basically retained that second value of m, m equals 16, which of course had resulted in 8. And this is simply because MATLAB does not rerun previous commands in the command window whenever you ask for the value of a variable, as we just did. So to basically update the value of y with the new m, we will go back to y equals m divided by 2 using the up arrow and press enter. And you will see that the value of y is now updated to 9. Since now it takes into account the last value of m, m equals 18. So 18 divided by 2 is of course 9. So always remember to keep your variables updated by rerunning any previous calculations that you may need. So that is all for this first MATLAB on ramp lesson. I hope you learned new fundamentals that will help jumpstart your MATLAB journey. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more, as this really helps motivate me to keep on creating more videos for you. Thank you for watching, and I hope to find you on the next video.